Just trust me, this video may save your life. Hi everyone, I'm that guy from Ukraine and in this video I'm going to tell you how to survive war by sharing my own experience of living the war in Ukraine. In this video I will focus on tips and practical advices that will potentially help you to survive war and all of that comes from my own experience, not from someone's articles or videos. I lived that, I experienced that and now I would like to share it with you guys because we don't know what's going to happen next in this world, you know. Uh, anything can happen and this war unfortunately can develop into anything of the worst scenario. But before I move on with my story, I would like to ask you for support. Uh, please like, subscribe to my channel. This means really a lot to me and to all of Ukrainians who are suffering right now in Ukraine. So first, if you don't know me, I would like to tell you a little bit about my own story, how the war started for me, where I was at the moment. My name is Dima, I'm 23 years old, and I grew up in Ukraine and lived here for a very long time. At the age of 17, I moved abroad where I lived for four years, and in 2019, I came back to live in the capital of Ukraine, Kiev. My hometown is the town which is called Bucha. You may have heard about this town uh, from the news because uh, this was one of the main places where Russians committed their genocide on the Ukrainians. Uh, on the 24th of February, when the war started, I was in Bucha and I was uh, escaping it uh, really quick in the first couple of hours when the war started. And probably that was one of the most difficult moments in my life that I've experienced. I do not spend that much time in my hometown nowadays because I travel a lot. Uh, I mean, I used to travel a lot when the borders for Ukrainian men were open uh, to cross, you know. Right now we are not uh, allowed to. But a couple of days before the war started, I decided to go back to my hometown to visit my parents' uh, house uh, where I grew up and spend some time with my family. Of course, I did not know that the war will start in a couple of days. Otherwise, probably I would uh, try to find myself some safer place on this planet Earth. And you know, one day before the war started, life in my hometown and in the whole Ukraine was pretty normal. I met my friends, we had drinks at our local bar, we walked around our local park. And you know, yeah, I had some thoughts uh, because everyone was talking in the news that this may happen, this that may happen, you know. And I was just like trying to use my imagination to, you know, imagine how the streets of my hometown would look like, how my school that I just uh, passed when I was walking in my hometown would look like if the war would start. Uh, my imagination could not predict the real horror that was coming. So I met my friend on the February 23rd. It was the evening, uh, eight hours before the war started. And, and you know, we were really happy to see each other. We even took a couple of pictures saying, like making this joke that, okay, let's take a picture because maybe it's our last uh, uh, photo of us. And then I went back home and uh, I started to check flight radar. Uh, that is the app that uh, uh, you can uh, track all the flights and planes. And I realized that Russia started to direct their flights uh, a little bit more far <laughs> from Ukrainian border. And in that moment I realized, okay, something is going to happen really, really soon. I slept for around three hours that night, because I usually go to sleep quite late. And I woke up at around 4.30 a.m. in the morning hearing the sounds of rockets and missiles flying above my house. And you know, I knew that the war started long before the whole world knew about that because around like 30-40 minutes after we heard first explosions there was no news about that. So my first practical advice to you would be to take things seriously. Really guys, when <laughs> we were very naive about that. We could not believe that in the 21st century, 2022, something like that can start in our country, in our hometown. Yes, uh, we had that conflict in the east of Ukraine since 2014 but that was nothing comparing to what is happening right now in Ukraine. So because of the fact that we got used to the bad news about our country, about all those Western and Eastern politicians talking about 
uh, Ukraine in the news. We thought that, uh, okay, they're saying some uh, blah blah stuff uh, again, because they said like almost every year that the huge war will start in Ukraine and it never happened. So we didn't take uh, things uh, and the news seriously. I would suggest you to turn on your critical mind and think about uh, reality and what you could do in case the things uh, uh, develop in the worst way. And I'm not telling you that if you saw the news that something may happen really bad, that you need like right away to book a ticket and leave the country, right? No, of course. You understand that this is your home and you don't want to leave because this is the place where you lived all your life and uh, this is your life actually. So before the war starts, you should think about a couple of things that may save your life and save your time when you will be escaping your hometown. First thing is you better pack a bag with all the essentials that you will need uh, in the first like four to five days when you will be fleeing your home country or hometown and when you will be relocated into a safer, safer place. First thing you need to take like the most important things. Those are your documents, um, maybe take some copies of your documents. Second is some cash money, cash because in the situation like this you never know if ATMs will work uh, or you will be able to use your Apple Pay, right? Uh, in the first uh, couple of days when the war started, it was really uh, challenging to get the cash from the ATMs in Ukraine. But uh, we were able to pay by card. But you know, every country is different so, and the system in every country is different. So you should be prepared for that too. It's good to have a couple of t-shirts, you know, some trousers and so on. But like don't pack too much stuff because when you will be using evacuation trains or buses, they will not allow to take uh, with you huge bags. Of course, you need to prepare the essential medicine that you may uh, need to use in such scenario. I suggest you to Google what are those medicines uh, that you, you may need in such situation. And of course, you need food and water. Not too much, because it, it may be heavy to handle all of that but uh, that kind of food that will not expire in a couple of hours and uh, you know uh, you need the amount of water at least for two days with you the other thing that you should consider before the war started is uh, knowing where are the closest bomb shelters in your location well you know there may be situation where you will not be able to leave your hometown right away the war starts so it's good to have a shelter that can cover your head uh, you should also check the conditions uh, of, of those shelters because sometimes it's uh, even worse to go to a bomb shelter than stay at home. Also, one important advice here is to get your car ready, uh, make all the repairments you need and to get it filled with the fuel because in the first hours when this happened, people went crazy. There were like kilometers queues uh, to get uh, on the petroleum station. And you know, right now, uh, three months after the war started, we still have the queues, but not because people need that much of fuel or because they are panicking, it's just because right now in Ukraine we lack uh, fuel. So you may be paying a little bit more for fuel right now, but we just don't have it. <laughs> so maybe uh, <laughs> get your an electric car uh, so you, you will not be depending on the fuel. And the other thing to consider before the war started is to analyze your risks of your location. You need to understand where you live because if you live uh, close to the civil or military infrastructure, it may be more dangerous for you than those people who live uh, in, in the villages or in some places where there is no infrastructure at all. In my case, uh, when the war started for me, uh, my hometown and my family house is located four kilometers away from the airport, Antonov Airport, the one that uh, used to be a base for the biggest airplane in the world, N-225. 
that was destroyed by Russians during the first days of war. Wow, that's a big plane. It's Russia. So yeah, Russians were targeting that airport and that location there. They tried to use it for their military goal. That's why they became really close uh, to the capital because my hometown Bucha is located like 10 kilometers from the capital uh, city. And yeah, that, that's why it was really dangerous to stay in my hometown. And that's why we left in a very few moments after we've heard the first explosion. So one of the most important advices is if you want to leave, you should to act really quick, like do it very fast. Because longer you wait, more people will uh, want to leave and there will be more traffic on the roads. We left in the first half an hour after it started and we were really lucky with that. It was the greatest decision because in the first day of war, a couple of hours after we left, all the bridges around my hometown were uh, destroyed uh, by Ukrainian military because, you know, they didn't want Russians uh, to make it in, into the capital city, Kiev. Another advice here would be not to panic. I know it sounds crazy how you cannot panic when such things going on around you, like there are bomb explosions and people are dying, you know? Okay, sometimes you may panic, you may feel not good, of course, it's okay, but you need to control yourself. And you know, for me, my first day was totally on the adrenaline. I didn't feel any stress, I didn't feel any panicking. I was just doing everything possible to save my ass. You know? So I got my car, I went to the capital city, Kiev, I picked up my friends and my, fam my parents were in another car and we went all the way to the village in the southern part of Kiev region that was in fact not attacked during uh, all this time. It took us around four hours to drive there. Usually it would take like one and a half hour, but there was a huge traffic on the roads. So when you get to the location where you, where you think it's safe to stay, it's very important to follow the next following steps. So first, stay away from the windows. Like, it's better like to cover them with something, of course. At least you need to use tape, to like normal tape to put on the windows. Uh, I know then it will be very difficult to clean it afterwards. But, you know, uh, it's very important to use it. So uh, if there is a wave uh, coming from the explosion, uh, if your uh, window breaks, uh, so parts of the window will not hurt you that much. And if there is no proper bomb shelter near you, it's important to remember the rule of two walls. What is this? You need to stay in that part of your house, uh, which uh, has at least two walls from the every side, uh, protecting you from the, the street, from the outside. You know why? because like the first wall uh, of your house will get the most uh, energy of the explosion, you know, it will be most probably destroyed. And the second wall will protect you from all those parts of your house and the glass and everything that breaks uh, from hurting your body. So in our case, in our apartment, it is uh, the corridor, in, uh, that the entrance corridor to the house and the bathroom. You know, when we got to the safer place, it wasn't like 100% safe there because, because in that part where we've stayed, we've heard all the explosions taking place somewhere a bit far away than it was in my hometown. And also we've seen the rockets and the missiles flying from the southern occupied regions by Russians, from Crimea, for example. And we've seen those like rockets flying above our heads and they were targeting the capital city, Kiev, in that moment. And it was really crazy because, you know, you would always understand that around one minute after you see this rocket in your location, it will hit someone's house in Kiev and people will die. So, you know, watching all those news about what is happening in your hometown, about how many people die every hour, it is crazy. It has a huge pressure on your mental health. Another thing that can drive you crazy is like staying with 
all your family and friends and people you may not know in one house for a very long time. You know, I'm used to live on my own. I have my spare room, like uh, my space that I'm comfortable in. But in that situation, you will lose everything and you will have to adapt to this new situation, the new reality. So another advice for you would be to first accept the reality, the new reality that is happening around you. Don't try to think that things can get back to normal. You got to accept this. You can cry as much as you want. You have, you can feel all the possible emotions, but you got to accept this first after you move on then with everything else. It is very important to take care of your mental health. The thing that helped me to feel better in those critical days were taking care about others and accepting the help from others. You know, there was that great feeling of unity that I kind of sometimes miss right now because I'm back to Kiev, uh, it got a little bit more safer here. You know, it is very important to take care of your mental health even if the war is not happening in your life. So you get to understand what helps you to feel better. I did yoga, I did exercise, I ate good healthy food. Uh, not always, but you know, it's, it's very important to do those steps. Of course, if you have access to food, because many people in Ukraine do, do, do not still have access to uh, normal food and water. I try to go like to the nature quiet place so I can stay uh, calm with myself and maybe meditate a little bit. It is also very very important to control the information that you receive from the media. You know uh, there was so much depressing stuff happening and of course there was some critical information that everyone uh, had to know about but you know try not to watch the news 24 hours per seven you know it, it, it will make you go crazy and remember it's okay not to feel okay cry if you want to cry smile if you want to smile you know all the feeling that you will experience are normal don't try to judge yourself and don't let anyone else to judge you we were not prepared for this war we were not raised and uh, no one made us aware how to act during the war. So uh, it is your responsibility, guys, to be ready for that such things. And you know, a couple of months ago, I could not believe that this may happen to me and my family and people of my country. And if the war starts, please remember that the most extreme day that you have to survive are the first four to five days. And in general, the first two to three weeks are the worst. You, your brain just does not understand what is going on. You may feel all the variety of emotions. You may feel depressed. You may feel like you want to die and everything else. After around three weeks, your brain starts to adapt to the situation and it finally accepts the new reality. And yeah, I would say that like after three weeks, one month, I felt completely used to the war, unfortunately. Uh, like I, I'm still scared of some sounds. I'm still scared sometimes from uh, sirens and the uh, news that something really bad, like nukes, can happen in my city. You know where I live right now. But I accepted the situation and I'm ready all the time for everything that can happen. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you will never, never in your life need the information that you learned in this video. I really. Uh, hope and pray for that. Please let me know if you have any questions, any comments on maybe share some your experience that you had. I will be uh, really happy to read all your comments and reply to them. Uh, I'm trying to start this kind of like-minded people community who are interested in the topic of Ukraine, our great culture, our amazing people and beautiful nature. I will tell you more about our country, our food and all of those topics in my next videos. So this channel is not only about war. <laughs> Please uh, subscribe and I see you in the next videos. Bye!